Hello YouTube, it's the US Minuteman back again. Uh, I know I said that I'd probably be doing a review video here shortly and uh, you know I thought that was going to be my first video but I realized that I haven't been able to use uh, my firearms or m m the gear all that much to its intended purposes. I go out occasionally go shooting usually with friends when I can, when I can afford it, when I can find ammo, you know. <clears throat> so I decided my first video is going to be about gun safety rules, which anybody, anybody who's a pro gunner, you probably know these rules. You don't have to watch this video. Well, please do. Make sure I do a, a good job. Um, but this is more geared to the people who are new to firearms. Or people who are on the fence about, oh, should I get a firearm? Should I get this? Should I get... You know, the first thing you should learn is safety. And I mentioned in this in, the, in my intro video that from the day I started with firearms, I was instilled in safety. I was handed an air rifle, never pointed at anybody I don't intend to shoot. I keep the finger off the trigger until I'm ready to shoot. I always make sure my muzzle is pointed in a safe direction. You know, all that stuff. Okay. And then, you know, eventually migrated to a 22, you know, shot. You know, I actually went from a 22 to a 30 out 6, actually. Then to a 45. You know, I kind of skipped the whole 9 and 5.56 and, you know, the, the light rounds. I kind of went from the smallest caliber to the to a, a bigger hunting caliber. But, um,. So, I'm going to talk about gun safety rules. Now, what I did on my computer here, I uh, typed in golden, the golden rules of gun safety. So, uh, I got 12 of them here. I'll go over them, and uh, I pretty much agree with them. Uh, as I'm reading here, I agree with them, and I will go over just these ones just for now. Um, perhaps I will do some extended rules later. Um, and for any of you that don't agree, or... And, you know, maybe think one is left out, or one could be taken out. One isn't as important. Maybe that's just a safety rule, but maybe not a golden rule. Um, you know, let me know. I like the comments. Let me know what uh, what you think about my video. What you think about uh, these rules that are coming up. And uh, all right, here we go. Now the first one, which I think most anybody who knows anything about firearms knows, this is the number one rule: always treat a gun as if it's loaded. Now, to show my FN40, FNS40, sorry. It is loaded, I know for a fact it's loaded, so I will safety check it. So, mag's loaded. So it was loaded. This particular one has a chamber indicator. But don't always trust that. So now, I know for a fact that it's not loaded because the slide's back. I can see inside the chamber, it is not loaded. But I still will treat it as if it's loaded. So I do that. It's not loaded. I know it's not loaded. But I'm still not going to use this and I'll point it at a friend and be like, oh, look at this, haha. -ha. No. Stupid. Alright? Still treat this gun even though I know it as if it's loaded. Now, I put it down. I go in the other room for a minute. I come back. Say the mag is in it. Say there's no bullets in, in the mag. I knew that. I pick it up. I treat it as, it's, as if it's loaded. And I do another safety check. Alright, I'm not loaded. But I still treat it as if it's loaded point it in safe direction, all that good stuff. Now why? Because you need to get into that habit of, of believing that this gun is loaded, that it can go off at any time. Now, realistically, guns don't do that. They don't just go off by themselves. But if you're in that mindset that if this goes off, if it's pointing at somebody, it could kill somebody, it could hurt somebody, you're, you're going to respect this gun. You're going to respect the firearm and you're going to treat it as if it could do damage. 
and that's what they're intended to do. But you have to treat it with respect. That is all. So I agree with that one, and every gun person will agree with that one. All right, number two, always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. Now that is true. Now there are you try to keep it pointed in the safe direction at all times. Now, for me, maybe it's down because I mean, below me is garage. You know, there's car there, blah blah blah. There's animals in the house. Um, try not to keep it pointed at them, but you know, uh, there I'm in a suburban neighborhood, so I have to be you know be careful if I if this did discharge, is it gonna go out the window and hit somebody's house? You know, I have a window right in front of me. You know, neighbors next door. You know, you just try to do it in the safest way possible. Now, you're never ever gonna be unless you're out in the middle of nowhere with nobody around. There's never going to be a hundred percent safe. You never know what's going to happen. You never know if, especially if you live with people, if someone's going to be in the next room. You may not know that. But that is why you treat it as if it's loaded. You just got to respect it. And perhaps some some of these other rules will help uh, help uh, keep it even more safe when safe directions are limited. But always keep the gun pointed in the safe direction. Don't. Don't point it at friends or anything like that. I'm not going to flip this around on me because that's just stupid. But, you know, if I were to flip it around on me and look in the barrel with the slide closed, especially, it's just stupid. Because how do I know I, maybe I forgot that there is a, a, a shell in there or not? Or a, a, a cartridge. So you never know. So uh, don't, don't do that. Don't look down the barrel <laughs> unless... I recommend not looking down the barrel unless you have it disassembled, which is easy to do, you know, and, you know, depending on the gun, obviously. Some guns are harder to do. I guess I shouldn't say they're easy to do, but, um, depending on the gun. Uh, now, some guns don't disassemble, like a maybe a long bolt-action rifle. Just keep that bolt open, you know, that kind of thing. So keep it pointed in a safe direction. Number three. Always keep your fingers straight and off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. I definitely agree with that. When I handle my guns, my hand is not on the or my finger is not on the trigger when I am handling the firearm. For an example, say I had to draw the weapon. I draw. See where my finger is? Right there. It's not on the trigger. It's right there. Alright, and you should treat that kind of with all firearms. You know, most pistols they're like that. You know, you, on rifles you can do the same, shotguns you can do the same. Just right above the trigger. Right there. Alright? So that's what it kind of means. It's just keeping your finger off the trigger until you you have the target that you want to sh in sight. And you want to fire. That's when you put the, your finger on the trigger. Alright, number four. Always keep your gun unloaded until you are ready to use it. This one... I agree, but I disagree. You have to kind of define the purpose of the firearm. My bolt action rifle, I have a bolt action rifle that I use for hunting. It's not going to be used for any sort of self defense whatsoever. You know, it, it's a long range gun, I'm not going to do it. So that's always unloaded. Now, this one, which I carry on my hip and throughout the house. Um, I don't have my CHL yet, so I don't carry this. Even though in the state of Oregon, I can open carry in majority of the state without a license. Um, but I just don't, for purpose, for principle. I just don't find it to be a good idea. I don't want the cop, the the police attention. Um, just don't want that. Um, so it's a personal choice, you know. I don't disagree. I don't. I don't dislike open carry. As a matter of fact, if I see someone open carrying, I'm going to, you know, I'll be fine with it. It's like, it's whatever. But that can be a different topic for another day. Alright, so. So, like I said, this one is loaded. And always loaded. Alright, because this one will be my primary for self-defense. And my home, um, when I'm out and about, 
um, when I decide to carry this out, 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 out and I have my CHL um, until I get a smaller pistol which I'll get a 9 somewhere somewhere down the line but yeah so this one's always loaded uh, my other I have another uh, handgun that it's not the magazines are loaded but the gun it, the, the magazines are not in the gun and it is so the gun is not loaded but it's ready to go when I need it to go. It's kind of a backup, I guess. But like I said, these are front and home. So it kind of depends on what you're doing. If you have a shotgun, you know, if I had a shotgun, I do not have a shotgun yet. Plan to get one. It will be loaded. It'll be a good home defense. It will be loaded. So that's kind of a situational golden rule. If it's not going to be used for defense, or you know if it can't be used for defense like that bolt like a bolt action rifle is not practical whatsoever it'd probably be even more cumbersome but uh you know it situation dictates tactics so um and i found that one to be situational and out of, out of some of these other rules i don't think it should be number four but we'll see uh anyway yeah so keep it unloaded unless the situation dictates for it uh, number five, never put the gun at anything you don't intend to destroy. I kind of keep that as a, always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. Kind of a, adds on to that. So wh whatever you want to point it at, that you, that's what you're intending to shoot when you're pointing at it. Alright, and so you have the gun under your control and you're pointing. Alright, so you better be intending to shoot that target. Whatever that target may be. All right, number six, be sure of your target and what is beyond it. Um, through my experiences in hunting, you make sure you know what you're shooting, whether it be elk, deer, you know, whatever you're hunting. You make sure you know what you're shooting at, all right? You also have to make sure because rifles can go through a deer, know what's behind it. If it's a mountain, mountainside, or hillside, great. If you're in a wooded area, more than likely it's not going to go too far before hitting a tree, but you never know. All right. If it's on a crest of a hill, like if you if you see a mountain and it's on the crest, uh, you don't want to shoot something like that. You know, shoot it, it might go through over the mountain. You don't know where it's going to end up. But, and, you know, when you think about an urban environment too, you know, if you have to defend yourself, you kind of have to know what's behind it. And sometimes it'll, you have an instant to take in that information. But you, you know, just realize that if you try to defend yourself and you hit someone behind the target, you're liable for that. So just be sure of your target, be sure of, you know, what is behind it. And, you know, you will be all right, you know, and, uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, number seven, learn the mechanical and handling characteristics of the gun you are using. That is a a good a good rule. Um, now here's here's how I try to say that. When you get a firearm, know what it can do for the situation. Like, for example, I know where the safety is, I know how to strip it, I know the slide lock, I know the mag release, I know I, I've shot it, um, not as much as I'd like, but I've shot it quite a, a bit. Um, I know how this gun handles. So, you got to know your, your gun. Know how it handles, how it feels, how, how, if you can handle the recoil, everything. You have to be able to know your firearm. Train with it. The best thing you can do with a firearm is to train with it, especially if it's a self-defense firearm. If this firearm is used for self-defense, train with it. Because if you do not, you're going to find yourself fumbling with that gun. Maybe you accidentally hit the safety or you forget to hit the safety in a situation. Maybe you weren't comfortable carrying in a chamber and, you know, you keep it... An, uh, a no uh, unchambered round. So that means you gotta pick it up, rack the slide, 
and engage the target. You gotta train with that. If you choose not to have a, a chamber, train with that extensively. I've uh, practiced a few times, but I can see how under stress that would be very, very difficult to do, even for a professional. Um, so yeah, train with your gun, know how it works, know how to use it, know the ins and outs of it. Number eight, always use proper ammunition. This is a this is a a good one as well. Um, I definitely do your research. I do not know a lot about ammunition uh, yet. I know Federal is supposed to be good. Remington is supposed to be good. Hornady. Uh, uh, Remington more so for for hunting rounds, but Hornady, Federal are the two that I hear about most. Um, there, I know there's probably a few others. Again, I don't know a lot about ammo, so don't quote me on what's the best ammo. I I don't know. Um, I usually use Federal, and I have a few Hornady and Remington. That's usually what I've used. A um, few uh, like American Eagle or something. You know, a bunch of crap ammo for 22. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, uh, use proper ammunition. Don't buy. Um, I do definitely recommend don't buying um, reloads f uh, from anybody else. Um, if you're gonna do reloads, I recommend you do them yourself, so you know what that round is, what you what you did to it. Um, that way, you can kind of control the ammunition, the quality of the ammunition that's being made. So I don't recommend it. Um, um, however, if you want to do, you want to use crappier ammunition or, or lower quality ammunition. Use them at the range. Use them at the range. Um, use them for target practice, for tactical practice, whatever you, whatever you're practicing. Don't depend on it. Don't depend on lower quality ammo for self defense. It's just not a good thing. Um, you may have problems feeding or cycling or you know what not so ammunition is definitely uh, quality is, is better number nine be sure the barrel is clear of obstructions before loading and shooting that is always a good thing because if the barrel is blocked it could blow up your face all right now when you're checking a barrel you do not Making, just doing a safety check really quick. Do not just be like, oh, I'll look down the barrel. No, that's just stupid. Even if you know you checked it for, like I just did. Um, on a handgun, on a semi-auto semi handgun, uh, rack the slide back and lock the slide back. This gun cannot fire in this position. This is the safest position you could be in. It, aside from it being taken apart. Then you can look through it on this end, through the through the slide, feel in there if you need to, and then look through there. Now it's not it, it's relative it, I hear different things whether you should look down the barrel or not. Um, if I check it and I unload it and whatnot, you know, I'll kind of look at the barrel and not point it directly at me, um, just to check if it's obstructed. Um, you can always run something like a, if you have a, a gun cleaning kit, you can run something through it to make sure it's un, up, un, not obstructed. It's always a good th good idea. But yeah, always make sure the barrel is not obstructed before you use it. All right, number ten. If your gun fails to fire when the trigger is pulled, hold your shooting position for several seconds. Then, with the muzzle pointed in a safe direction, carefully unload the gun. Now, this is a pretty good one because you fire. Maybe the striker or the hammer or the firing pin hit the primer. Maybe that went off, maybe the powder wasn't so good, or maybe it's slow burning. You know, maybe it got something something happened. I've I have not seen a delayed shot before, 
but I haven't put a lot of rounds through it. I've heard of it happening where you fire, it didn't go off at first. And then you and someone, you know, checks it out and it en ends up going off. So delayed firing can happen and so if it does not go off you do that. I have had a friend take his mecker off. He would shoot the bullet went like an inch down the barrel and got stuck because of bad ammo. Bad reloading ammo, by the way. Reloaded ammo. And it didn't even cycle the gun. So he had to get, you know, safety check it, do it, and he ended up having to take it and try to get that bullet out. I don't know how he got it out and never asked him, but stuff like that can happen. The bullet didn't come out and it didn't seem like it fired. It just kind of had a little pop. So, uh, if it does not fire, keep it pointed in that same direction and unload it. Get that round away. You know, you can check it. If it's, especially if it's dented, just throw that, that shell away. Throw it, throw it away. Get rid of it. I don't know how you'd want to get rid of it. That's up, kind of up to you. Alright. Uh, number 11. Don't rely on the gun's safety to keep it from firing. This is one I, I definitely agree with, and probably could be a little bit higher. Well, the safety is a mechanical device. Mechanical devices fail. You know, safety harnesses fail, safety belts can fail, um, you know, safety belt, safety seat belts from cars. Um, so a safety device can fail. It happens. Um, generally they're pretty good, but don't rely on it. Never rely on it. Okay, don't be pulling the trigger with a round in it with the safety on. Thinking, oh, the safety's on, it's going to be alright. Boom! Shoot a hole in your ceiling. Not going to happen. As long as you can just keep your finger off the trigger. But never rely on the safety. Alright, number 12. Be aware of your surroundings when handling guns so you don't trip or lose your balance and accidentally point and or fire the gun at anyone or anything. I've actually never really thought about this as a rule before, but it's a good idea. It's a good, it's a good rule to think about. Be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of if anything can trip you and you have the gun in your hand and you're like, oh, it goes off. It's a good one to know. Always be aware of where that gun might end up pointing if you fall or, you know, whatnot. Um, yeah, and those are the 12 golden rules. And actually, there's a couple other rules here that I'll, I'll just go over briefly. Uh, range safety. Number, rule one, follow the 12 golden rules. Pretty good. Two, know and follow all rules of the shooting range. Each range has their own, their own rules, whether... You can holster your firearm and draw from the holster, or um, some you can only fire so fast, you can only use their ammunition, stuff like that. Just follow their rules. Um, they'll tell you their rules when you go to a shooting range, so uh, just make sure to follow those. Uh, listen and do whatever the range master tells you to do. Um, that's always a good thing, you know, whoever's in there, you know, making sure it's, it's uh, everyone's doing their part to be safe. Uh, that's his job, to make sure everybody's safe. So listen to him or her, and uh, you'll do just fine. Uh, uncase and case your gun at the shooting bench, never behind the safety line. So there's usually a safety line, and you step forward into the shooting range, and that's where you're ready to fire. So keep your gun in your case until then, and I'm sure the range master will explain this to you. Always keep barrels pointed downrange. Um... That is definitely true because usually there are side walls. You're almost like in a cubicle almost, and those aren't you know bulletproof or anything. I don't think. Um, and there are shooters beside you shooting downrange at their targets, so you know keep it pointed downrange. Make sure that there are people there. You may not be able to see them, but there could be people there. Um, always keep the gun on safe until you intend to shoot. You know, pretty self-explanatory there. Always wear eye and ear protection when shooting. 
And you know what? That should go for any form of shooting. Um, whether you're at a range, or you just go up into the hills and mountains, or in the woods to go shooting by yourself, because, you know, shooting range is going to be expensive. So, wear I at least ear protection, at most ear protection. Um, I wear ear protection because, you know, for sure the gun sounds, unless you have a suppressor, um, is going to hurt your ears. And, I, and wearing eye protection is a good idea as well, but for flying cases or, or whatever. It's always a good idea. Never shoot at water or hard surfaces at a shooting range. Water, believe it or not, will reflect a bullet. It will ricochet one. Hard surfaces as well. I'm sure that's self-explanatory, but uh, just don't do it. And also hunting safety tips. Rule 1. Follow the 12 golden rules. We've been over that. When hunting in a group, always pick one person to act as a safety officer for the day or trip. So someone who's just keeping an eye out, you know, making sure people's guns aren't pointing at other other hunters or whatever. Just, you know, it's a good idea. Um, Alright. Uh, establish and share everyone's zone a fire with each other and know where everyone is at all times. Now the idea of that is especially particular to any sort of uh, bird hunting with shotguns like pheasant, duck, whatever. You know, you're walking maybe or you're sitting and alright, I have a buddy next to me. I shoot here, all the way over here. And you shoot from here, all the way over here. That way I, we don't cross guns, you know, and all that good stuff. And, you know, create danger zones when I'm shooting over on his side and he's right over there. So, always a good idea. Kind of keep your, your own zones. Uh, you know, it like I said, it particularly uh, is for, you know, bird hunting. But, you know, it's, uh, it's also good for any sort of, if you're hunting deer or anything else. Um, know where your partner is. No, you can't shoot a deer that's over behind him. You know, you have to get, you know, you just don't let them be in between you and your target. Um, always keep the gun on safe until you intend to shoot. It's a good idea. Just, you know, make sure you know what safety is. I know hunters, some hunters, you know, you won't put safety is on if you're alone or whatever. But, you know, it's a good idea. Uh, um, you know, just safeties are there to be safe. They're intended to keep it from accidentally going off or being bumped or you accidentally touching the trigger, anything like that. So safeties work. Work, but maybe not 100%. So like I said, don't trust them 100%, but good to keep them on. Never climb over anything with a loaded gun in your hand or on your person. Now I've learn this through a hunter safety course that I took when I was young that usually you're not supposed to go hunting by yourself anyway so you have another person you hand them the gun you climb over they hand you your gun and their gun through a fence or over rock or something and then they climb over then you give them their gun back it's kinda how it works never use a scope on a gun as binoculars um, I guess, yeah, that's probably a good idea, um, because, you know, if, if you're just scoping stuff, and it, it tends to not be what you want, maybe it's a person camping, and, you know, you're hunting, it's not a good idea to just point them at that. I have really thought about that before, I probably have used a scope as binoculars before, um, never had any problems, but now that I think about it, it is probably a good idea not to use your scope on your rifle as binoculars. Carry a set of binoculars, which I usually do anyway. Um, but just some for, for thought. So carry binoculars with you. Uh, if you fall or trip, control your muzzle afterwards. Check the gun for damages and or obstructions in the barrel. That is actually something I have done before. And uh, luckily, you know, I, I can keep my gun pretty well. Um, didn't drop it, didn't do any of that kind of stuff. Um, kept kept the gun in good shape. Um, 
When in doubt, don't shoot. That's a big one. You see something move on there? Maybe, oh, did I see antlers? Maybe I did. Oh, I can't tell. Oh, but it looks big. Oh, man. You decide to take that shot. Oh, no. It wasn't the game animal you were hunting. It wasn't that monster buck or the monster bull that you were hoping it would be. It was another guy who had some antlers on his backpack that he uses to call or to simulate the fighting. You know, for you hunters out there, you know what I'm talking about. And you just killed a person or shot him. You gotta live with that. You are gonna be prosecuted for that. You're liable for that. So, always remember all these rules. If you have any questions, please hit my comments up. Please like and share my videos. Always remember that guns are not toys and should be retrieved with respect. And it is your job to be prepared for any situation that may come your way.